G'day guys, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back for another episode of Wasteland Survival. So, obviously in last week's episode, we got the satellite dish done. Um, I've modified the timer on this, and I've changed it to 80 seconds. Um, so I'm hoping that is enough for it to do a full swing and then go all the way back again. I don't really want it to kind of pause for a long time, although as you can see, it is pausing for a while just because I've only just started the timer when it was halfway through its rotation. So hopefully that's enough to make it, um, yeah, I don't know, yeah, make it um, not pause for ages and then still do its full rotation. Um, then obviously all, all we did is we got um, this door on the outside done and then also the one on the other side. And I think I'm pretty happy with the interior so far. I think the only thing I want to do here though is maybe go ahead and add in some sensors for these doors. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to place these sensors though. I think, um, so, well let's try and figure out where I can place these sensors. Actually, in fact, you know what I need to do as well? I actually need to go and seal this roof up. So what I'll do is I'm going to use some plates here to do this, I think. Um, so I could use plates or I could use like half blocks or something like that. Um, but I think plates is probably going to be the most elegant solution. So I think what I'll do... Uh, actually, nah, see, I was thinking maybe what I could do is use um, half blocks. But the only problem is you'd see like this little bulge. Um, so I think plates is kind of discreet enough where, you know, it's not really going to look that nasty. So let's go ahead and place in some plates and get these welded up. And then this room should be airtight once more. And there we go. It is airtight. Fantastic. And then obviously we've got this timer block in the roof, but I guess it just gives it a little bit more detail. So maybe what I can do is place another plate here as well, just to make it look that little bit nicer. Um, in fact, I could even just place them all the way along just so that it kind of, um, I don't know, just looks continued, if that makes sense. In fact, I need to grab some materials for these, so let's do that. I know this part is a little bit boring, but hey, you know. Right, so now that they're done, let's go ahead and let's get these sensors set up. So I don't know where I really want to put these sensors. I think, um, so I'll grab materials for, can I grab four of them? Yeah, I can, sweet. So I think for this door here, I'll place the sensor there and also on the opposite side here. And then we'll just go and weld those up. And I'll do the same for this one as well. Um, what I need to do as well is rename these doors. So what should I call this door? So control, uh, control tower inner door uh, left. And then obviously I will call the door on the outside the outer door so let's call this one the same thing so let's rename this one to outer door energy low all right and then what we can do is name energy this one critical the inner sensor left cool all right so what I want to do is I want this sensor to yeah basically open this door so maybe what I can do is we'll show the sensors field of range um, we'll go back into the control panel of this sensor and we can turn off the audible proximity alert and we can select the show on HUD and I can see the sensors field of range fantastic all right so I think I want this sensor to be left extent um, we want this to be 2.5 so 3.75 I think so it goes to the edge of this door um, actually no, I want it to be a block and a half, so yeah, that should be 3.75, um, weird, alright, let me, did I put that at 3.75, no, I didn't, why didn't that save, enter, there we go, yeah, I was wondering why that wasn't on the edge there, okay, alright, let's, um, set the right extent to 0 0.1, 
because that's the minimum. The bottom extent, I'll set that to 1.25. The top extent, I'll set that to 1.25 as well. The back extent, which is behind the sensor, I'll probably set that to about 1.25 because I want the door to close pretty quickly behind me. Um, and the front extent, we'll set that to, let's say, oh, two meters. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that's pretty acceptable. And then how far in does it go here? Um, I think I might need to make it go to about here. So maybe we can change that 1.25 value. So the back extent, we'll set this to maybe 1.6. So let's see how that looks. Um, yeah, maybe a bit more. So maybe I could go f two meters. So let's try two meters and see where that ends up. 2.0. Okay. Yeah, I think that's acceptable. Um, actually, it's probably a little bit further than what I want. Um, yeah, because what I don't want to happen, and I've explained this before, I don't want both doors opening at the same time and depressurizing the whole space. So maybe I'll dial that back to... Um, where's back extent? Maybe I'll dial that back to 1.65 and then that should be fine all right so now all we got to do is go to set up actions and tell this to open my door so i'll paste that in um, i will go open and then close and now it should control this door awesome fantastic and then all we need to do is turn off this sensors field of range so turn that off wait no turn this one off okay there we go now the question is where am i going to place the sensor for the one on the outside um normally what i would do is just place it on this wall here but obviously as you can see we've got our catwalks there and i can't do that so i could place it there but it's too deep into the control tower where i would trip the sensor well before i got to the door and it would like open the door before it opened the inner door so i think the only choice i've got here is to place a sensor here so i could place one there but obviously on this side you can see that i can't because the voxels are in the way and in case you guys didn't know sensors do not play nice with voxels so if there is any voxel in the way then you can't place the sensor down which is a bit of a shame so what i could do in fact is place a sensor here on this side um which kind of solves yeah but the only problem with that is when you're walking up the ladder the door will still be open but i think for this side i'm just going to place the sensor there so that's fine no um, energy. Now it looks like i've got no energy but that's all right i don't need it because i don't need to weld things up so we will call this the right sensor and oh i've misspelled that and then we'll call this one the outer sensor Control tower, outer sensor right. Okay, fantastic. I will s turn off audible proximity You're alert. Low. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, ho, 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 that was You're so critical. close. <laughs> All right, let me get some more fuel. I'll be back. Okay, so I got myself some more fuel. Right, let's get this sensor sorted. Um, so what do we've got? We've got half a block one block and two blocks so five meters plus 1.25 so we need that to be 6.25 meters so the left extent needs to be 6.25 the right extent needs to be 0 0.1 the bottom extent needs to be 1.25 the top extent needs to be 1.25 as well the back extent i'll set that to the same as the other one which i believe was 1.65 um, so that's fine and the front extent I will probably set that to like 0 0.25 um, so that I need to get like really close to the door to get it to work actually I think I messed this up wait um, so I need to change the right extent to 6.25 and the left extent to 0 0.1 I got mixed up there wait yep set that to nothing okay fantastic 
so then I just need to rename this door. So that means I've got to get pretty close here, but while I'm walking up the ladder, it shouldn't trip the sensor and open the door. So as soon as I come through, then it kind of unlocks for me. Um, yeah, so I'll have a nice gap here where the sensor won't trip and it should work pretty nicely. So let's rename this door. So this is the outer door right. And I'm just going to copy that so it's easy to find when I go into the setup actions of this sensor. So let's go into here, setup actions, paste that in there, open, closed. Right, now this sensor should open and close this door for us. So yeah, I've got to get pretty close to the door for it to open. But I think it works out pretty nicely. So what I'll do is I'm going to go away and try and figure out exactly how I can get this sensor on this wall here. I don't know where I'm going to place it, to be honest. Um, maybe I could place it underneath this catwalk here, like um, here, because then I don't need to drill out any voxels. Um, the only problem with that is that the door's going to remain open when I'm kind of outside, so... Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to figure that out off camera and uh, I'll be back once all these sensors are done. Okay guys, welcome back. So I have placed and set up all of these sensors. Um, so far everything is working pretty well. Um, I was thinking about what to do with the sensor for here because obviously I can't place it there. I can't place it there and I can't place it further in the mountain because I don't really want to drill this stuff out. Although I, I guess maybe I could. But I would have to drill a tunnel um, all the way along the side of this wall and it would just look weird. It wouldn't be so bad if I just had to drill it out so that, you know, this catwalk was fully exposed. So I thought, well, how am I going to do this? So what I've ended up doing is just drilling a, a tunnel straight down here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is place the sensor here. Now, this block is actually one block below where I need to place it. I need to technically place the sensor here, um, but I guess it, whoops, it doesn't really matter if I place the sensor one block um, too low. So let's see if it will actually let us place this sensor in. Um, I'll have to be out of the way of this sensor um, and hopefully it will let me place it down. Fantastic. All right, so is that the correct orientation? Yes, it is. So now what I'll do for this one is I will actually have to use the, um, so show sensors field of range. I will have to use this functionality and let's paste in the control tower, outer, outer sensor left and then delete everything after that and show on HUD. We'll turn that on. Um, okay. So what I need to do is go outside and see where this kind of ends up. So if that's five meters, then I need it to go because the default for a sensor is five meters. So then I need it to go another half a block and then another full block. So what's that? Three points, six, five meters. So I need to go another 3.65 meters to the sensors right. So let's see if that is indeed the case. So let's turn my jetpack off here. So let's go another 3.65 meters on the right extent, which will be 8.65. Now the bottom extent, I'll set that to 0 0.1. The left extent, 0 0.1 and the top extent I will go five meters because that's two blocks the back extent will be uh, I think it was 0 0.65 from memory um, and then the front extent well actually maybe it was 1.65 so one point now nah, I'll go 0 0.65 we'll see how that looks okay the front extent I will set that to I can't remember what I set the other one to. What did I set the other one to? Let's have a look here. Um, front extent is 0 0.25. 
so yeah let's go and it was 1.65 so let's go 1.65 and then 0 0.25 on the front okay let's see how this looks so let's head on out of this little tunnel that I've made and yeah so that is pretty much what I want the door to do so let's go into this door copy this text here so that when we go into the sensor for these setup actions we can just paste that door in there so let's go in here and let's go set up actions paste that in open and then closed and then this door should now open and close when I want it to and then all I need to do is put in a block here and then this is all filled up and you would never even know the sensor is there so fantastic um, yeah and then also when you kind of walk out to this platform the door will kind of close behind you so yeah that works out pretty good now one thing I noticed with these doors which is a little bit weird um, sometimes and I can't really demonstrate it right now because they're kind of behaving themselves but sometimes what happens is um, these doors glitch out and the room doesn't pressurize and you have to like go in and out of these doors and open and close them a couple of times for it to then pressurize the space so if you are having issues with a room pressurizing and you are using these doors then just confirm it's not just the doors and you know um, rather than trying to find a leak that isn't actually there because I have noticed this issue before and sometimes it's probably better to use these doors here as I've experienced that these doors don't actually have that glitch so all right fantastic so now that all the sensors are done well with the exception to this other sensor here I'm going to turn the sensor inner sensor right no outer sensor left We'll show that on HUD and we'll turn that off and then we'll turn off that functionality as well okay so now I just got to think about what I'm gonna do for so the next thing that I want to do is I think I want to add some accent lighting to this satellite dish here because one good thing is that the lights that are inside the control tower are kind of poking through and then lighting up this thing so that looks pretty cool but I think I would like to add some orange lights to this thing. So um, what I can do here is we can find our corner lights. Uh, where are my corner lights? Here we go. Um, do I have materials for these? No, I don't. So I probably need to go and grab some materials for those. Um, so let's grab some materials. Fantastic. And then... Right, so what I want to do is place a light here, um, but first, before I worry about that, what I'm going to do is adjust the offset, because what I want to do is probably set the offset to be around about here, or maybe even here, so that I can light up the entire dish orange. Um, so let's see here, let's find our corner lights, if I can spell correctly. My typing is really bad today for some reason. All right, so offset, let's set that to five meters. And where is that going? I can't really tell, to be honest. Um, hang on. Let's maybe set the offset to something a little bit smaller. So maybe like, I don't know, 1.25, 1.6. Uh, I think I can see it. It's going, yeah, I don't know where it's actually going, to be honest. It looks like it's going that way. All right, let me reduce the offset a bit here. It's really hard to figure out where the offset is actually going on this. Um, I suppose I could just build one on the floor to see which orientation they're at. So let's reduce the offset and see if the light moves in. Yeah, it moves in. So the offset is going that way. So I want to get rid of this light then and then go in and place the light but we'll flip it around like that place that down there then we'll place another one down there like that and then another one there on that side too so let's weld these three up let's find them in the control panel so let's go and find these in the control panel so corner 
so it should be these three these three here I think so that one that one and that one so let's change the color to 170 100 and I'll set the radius to about well let's go with um, 7.5 meters to start with the fall off I'll set to 2.0 intensity 0.8 um, or actually maybe I'll go a little bit higher so 1.2 and then the offset and then that should move up fantastic so the offset I'll set that to about let's go with three meters and um, let's see how it looks yeah I think that looks pretty good I might increase the radius though maybe I can go the full 10 meters and let's see how that looks so let's find our corner lights once more and I will rename these in a minute, but I guess you guys don't really need to see that. Um, yeah, so I think that looks pretty good. And then you can kind of see the satellite dish from ages away. Yeah, fantastic. All right, cool. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to... Why won't my welder come out? What I want to do on the bottom here is the same as what I've done on all of these um, landing pads. And I want to put a leg there. So, I was a bit up and down about what I wanted to do with the leg, but I think I will go ahead and place a leg down. Um, only thing is, what I may do though, is I might get rid of these blocks here, because I don't really need them to be airtight, I don't think. Let's um, have a peek inside and see if it's still pressurized. Yeah, it's still pressurized. So, what I want to do is get rid of all of these blocks here. And then actually extend out this platform to that point there so that the leg kind of moves forward a little bit. I guess I could just leave it so that it's like these blocks and then just move it like one block further. But I'm not sure if I want to do that. Or maybe I could integrate the leg into the whole setup here because I want the leg to be as far forward as possible so that it looks like it is actually supporting stuff although I got to admit I am kind of happy with the fact that it's just sticking out of the mountain but since adding the satellite dish here I guess it it does make the control tower look like it's really heavy so maybe um, maybe it is a good idea to put the leg there to kind of balance it out and then you know with there being such a large amount of blocks on top it would kind of balance it out if there was the same amount of blocks on the bottom so all right well I'll be back in a second once I've finished all this um, rework all right so as you can see I've gone ahead and I've moved all these blocks one block forward so that they are kind of flush with this window here so now I guess we can start creating our leg but I was thinking with the leg for the control tower rather than it being a steep angle like these ones are maybe instead what I can do is I can make it at a shallower angle and the way I would do that is by basically grabbing um, these blocks here so just our tips and then just placing them like that so we'll place one there one there and then we can begin our leg so then from there we put in this block another one of these and then one of these again and then also one of these once more and then another one of these blocks and another one of these blocks here and then from there I'm not sure how many blocks back I will go I think I can only go back one block or maybe I could make it like this so we could just go like that and then just have like a really tiny little support brace um, whoops put the block in the wrong spot um, I don't really want it to be absolutely massive because I, I don't think yeah see that doesn't look half bad actually um, and then from there we can just complete this other side I think I am kind of happy with that I was actually considering not having any brace whatsoever on the bottom um, but I suppose what I'll do is I'll build it anyway and then if I don't like it I can always just grind it all back and then um, do something else later so we'll finish up this part we'll put in this block and then from there we will put in our little tip 
So that should be this block, except I need to spin this around like that. Fantastic. And then in the middle here, obviously what I'm going to do is place in these blocks here. So our beam blocks. So we need to find ourselves a tip. Um, place that tip there and then put in one of these ones. And then from this point onwards, what I need to do is place the other blocks behind these ones. So I've got to spin that one around and then I've got to spin this one around as well. And then we will do the same thing. Wait, is that correct? I uh, don't think it is. Wait, let me move this one that way. Yeah, that's the right way to do it. So then we'll place in one of these tips but I've got to spin this thing around again if uh, <laughs> it's always so confusing when you're not facing a block straight on it spins in the other direction and it's hard to kind of gauge where it's actually all going so yeah we'll do something like that and then obviously on the sides here what we're going to do is place in these blocks so I'll place in my blocks like that and then I will have to do the same here on this side so we'll place in this block here, but we'll spin that around. And then obviously I've got to do the same on this side, spin it around like that. I'm actually not sure if this is even going to work because I don't know if these blocks are kind of too close together to work. So let me grab this block here, the large one, um, which is this one here. So we'll spin this one around until it fits. Yeah, see, that's the only problem with making the leg this thin. I can't really taper the outside because the other side of the block doesn't match up with that. So I would kind of have to only taper the front. So maybe instead what I can do is something like this and just use these blocks here on this side because it's closest to the bottom of the control tower and then on this side we can use these blocks here um, and then from there I think I just need to use a regular uh, no I would need to use a two by one base like that okay so let me get all of this stuff welded up and then we'll see how this looks um, although I kind of suspect I'll need to wait until daylight before I can get this welded up and actually see how this looks. So, all right, I'll see you guys in a moment. All right, cool. So everything is welded up and I think that looks pretty good. I, yeah, like I said, I really wanna wait until daylight to see exactly how good this actually does look. Um, Cause I, I really don't know. I kind of like the sleek look that this whole control tower has just popping out of the mountain without all of these um, these things trying to hold it up so but I think I want to dress up the roof a little bit more as well so I was thinking maybe what I could do here is place in something Energy. here that yeah. kind of looks like a bit of a support but um, not really just kind of dressing things up and making things look nice so what I'll do is I'm gonna place down one of these blocks here like that and I'll actually use I'll leave this here, um, but I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a minute. Um, so we will place in a whole line of blocks along this way like this. And I think I'm going to make use of half blocks here. Um, so do I need to go any further back? No, I don't. Okay, fantastic. So let's go ahead and place all these blocks in there like that as well. And looks like I've got to go a little bit further back like that. And then in the middle of this, um, after I place in this little corner piece here, um, where is my corner piece? Why is this upside down? That's weird. Um, so now let's grab our beam blocks and we'll place in a beam block two by one tip. So we'll grab that and place that there like that. And then from there, I'll just put in some half blocks behind that. And um, yeah, it just kind of dresses the roof up a little bit and gives it a more of an interesting look. Um, now, somebody in the comments section kind of suggested why don't I put some weapons up here. And I got to admit, I am really tempted to do that. I don't, I don't know where exactly the cargo or the conveyor system is for me to do that. So 
Um, if I go ahead and I place this here, then obviously I'm not going to be able to place a weapon there. So I'm not sure if I will be able to do that. Although at this point in the recording of this episode, it's been about a day or so since they released the new update. So maybe what I could do is put one of those little tiny custom turrets here um, because I think I could get away with that. So if we have a look at these weapons here, obviously they take up a 3x3 three three space. So you, you basically need everything to be um, out of the way and a really flat surface to put these down. Whereas if I place in one of my custom turrets um, or one of the custom turrets that one of my viewers showed me, um, then basically I would only need it to be you know the size of a hinge so I would actually be able to place one there and then maybe place one on the other side but I'm not sure if I can do that because I don't know exactly where it actually pops out and what I would like to do is if I am going to place a weapon on this I would like to place one on the other side as well but the problem is that I think it would be too close to the mountain and I just don't know how much protection it would kind of give me yeah, so anyway, what I'll do is I'll weld all this stuff up and then we can explore that a little bit more and see where exactly the conveyor system is and then I can kind of figure out if it is actually possible to place in one of these weapons. Okay guys, well I have gone ahead and I've found the conveyor so it basically sits here. Um, so it's, it's in a reasonably good position here to place a weapon but obviously I can't place a weapon here because if I grind this block out then there's no way that I can place a weapon there so yeah um, but I think what I can do is I can run the conveyor up here um, so let's um, let's grind this out and see if I can actually do this um, so underneath here should be my conveyor so what I can do is I can run the conveyor up to about this point and then grind this block out and then basically place another conveyor here and then run the conveyors up until this point here and I can place a weapon here or maybe here on either side. Um, I may even just like be able to place one here or something like that. Um, it just depends on how far forward I can go until I hit like one of these doors or something like that. So, um, in fact, what's behind this block? No, see, that's pretty much as far back as I can go. Um, so I'll have to re-weld that block up. Um, obviously, I can't grind these blocks out and place conveyors here. I could do that, but then what I would have to do is basically, yeah, I would have to place in some plates on top and I don't really want to do that because it just won't really look that flush. So I think, yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do. So what we'll do is I will run a conveyor and put a conveyor junction there. And then on top of that, I'll place my advanced rotor and then we can start building these custom turrets. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've already pre-withdrawn all of the components for two rotors, two advanced rotors and a hinge. So, well, that's pretty much all I could fit on my inventory. Unfortunately, I couldn't fit all of it. So let's go ahead and let's place in our advanced rotor. So, which, I guess it really doesn't matter which orientation it is. So I'm just going to place it in like that. And we'll place it in there like that as well and see if we can get in there and weld that up. So weld that up, very nice. And let's go and weld this one up as well. So I'll weld this. And then from here I can place on my two hinges. So we'll grab a hinge and we will place it here. But what I want to do is place it on the back. Um, this little piece here on the back. So. Um, but what I want to do is get rid of the part because I don't need that. And yeah, it looks like I've run out of uh, components to build that. I thought I did withdraw the components to build at least one of these things, but obviously not. And matter of fact, why have I got so many? Oh yeah, because I just picked up all those steel plates. Okay, let me grab some more components and I'll be back. Okay, so got more components. Let's get these things welded up and let's weld up another one on this side. And then from there, what I need to do, so is that little bit facing towards the back? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and weld that up. It doesn't look super elegant, but I guess it looks better 
then yeah see I would really like it to be completely flush with the ground but at the same time it's um yeah I think it at least I'll be able to place a weapon here somewhere you know so um, whereas previously I wouldn't even be able to do that so okay now what I need to do is put down a small rotor um, so there is a way in which I can do this without having to use a ship um, I could place a small rotor or a rotor here so what we can do I know I did it differently in my tutorial video but there is a way to do it without doing it that way so I guess what I can do is I can grind away this part um, then I can place down a rotor like that but we will get rid of this and every time I mess around with these things I really wish that I had a um, <laughs> the build planner mod because yeah but I've tried to use it before but it's one of those things where I never really um, know how to use it um, okay so then what we're gonna do is add a small head so then that should add a small head to our rotor over here which it has done well that's an advanced rotor oh, I didn't really want that but that's okay um, and then from here what I can do is I can place down one of these blocks although I need the components to do that so let's grab some more parts here so we'll grab a couple of these um, hopefully that's enough to get everything that I want built so we will grab our small grid conveyor and then from there what I will do is grab a whole bunch of blocks that go out like this to this rotor or to this hinge I should say um, so let's grab I think I want one more block yep I can do that and then what I can do from here is find my hinges and we can add in a small hinge part um, I think I might need one more block so let's place another block down and let's find our small hinge part like that and hopefully it will let me attach that so although of course I need the components for that all right let's um let's run the other one so let's grab a whole line of blocks oh, oh. got a bit trigger happy there <coughs> all right so what I'll do is I will run the other hinge part here grab all the components for them get them welded up and then we can see if we can actually attach these things this way um, in my tutorial for this turret I basically placed this hinge part um, with the conveyor port facing towards the back um, so I think this way it should be relatively good so if I place it like this then I will be able to make the turret look down as well whereas when it was placed towards the back I don't think I will be able to make it look down because as far as I know these hinges can only go in a 180 degree arc I don't think they can go any further although feel free to correct me if I am wrong in that judgment so I think this way at least the turrets will be able to look down a bit um, whereas if I place it that way then they would kind of only be able to go flat and not go any lower than that um, so anyway all right I'll be back once I've grabbed all the parts I need to get this built all right so I'm back with most of the parts that I need to get this done so let's go ahead and place in our blocks um, come on let me place them please uh, is that right no I need to go one more um, place a block here and then we can grab our small grid small hinge uh, like that let's get that welded up and let's go over here and let's get this one here welded up so then we should be able to go into the control panel here and then actually attach these hinge parts so I have hinge no um, it should be okay so this one's detached let's attach that cool so it does attach and let's attach that one as well so how much clang is going on here there is actually no clang which is brilliant so then we'll get rid of that get rid of that a um, little bit of lag because the subgrid has been disconnected let's get rid of that 
and fantastic so I believe this hinge is now attached so then we can go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff um, whoops I didn't want to do that energy okay cool all that stuff is gone so now what we can start doing is actually building our turret now I took the liberty of actually getting rid of or actually withdrawing some of these um, blocks here so what I'll do is I'll place a small conveyor there um, and then another three at the back if I can manipulate my character in the correct orientation so let's place them let's place another one up there let's get all of these things welded up get those done and then from there I think what I'm going to do is just place in some regular blocks like this so we'll just place those down we'll get these welded up as well hopefully I have enough steel plates to do that looks like I do and then what I can do is find my weapons so I think for this I'm going to use auto cannons um, I was kind of tempted to use um, what's the other guns that you have the Gatling guns, but I think I would like to use some of the new weapons that have been added into the game So we're just going to place these All above each other unable to place it. Come on. Let me place it man uh, Then place one there and place one There is that uh, I think this one is actually one block too far forward which is not what I want. I guess what I could do as well is I could grind that out and I could place in a um, another conveyor junction here. Where's my small conveyor? So I could place in a small conveyor here as well. So let's place that one down. Um, and then what I could do is I could get rid of this gun, get rid of this gun, and also this gun here and then what I can do is I can actually stagger the guns I think that might look a little bit cooler as well so whereabouts is this wanting to place so we'll place that there then we'll place this one here like that um, and then another one there and then another one there and then now the guns are kind of staggered so you got these ones that in the middle that are kind of sunken back and just makes it look that little bit more interesting Energy all right so critical. let's weld these up quickly okay cool so these guns are now welded up so then what I'm gonna do is just decorate the outside a little bit so for this what I usually do is just use these tips like that um, all the way across and then do the same at the back so we'll place them like that and then it looks more like a, a kind of a ball turret um, so let's place those in for here. We'll just use some regular armor blocks Now being small grid I could probably get away with using heavy armor here um, But to be honest, I, d I don't think small grid heavy armor is really going to help me um, If this turret ever gets fired upon it really yeah small grid heavy armor is a bit of a um, Yeah, a bit of a meme. It doesn't really offer that much more protection than what light armor does I guess maybe it does but um, I don't know if it's really worth it so I dare say that if this turret gets fired upon it's gonna die whether or not I use um, those or not all right well looks like I've run out of energy so maybe while I'm in here as well what the what I plan to do here is I actually want to replace some of these blocks with the new blocks that were added in the warfare update so um, let's well first I need to get myself some energy and then while we're in here maybe what we can do is we can replace these two blocks in the center here um, on either side with the new warfare custom turret blocks okay so I finally retrieved well I finally gathered myself a little bit of energy here so let's go ahead and grind out all four of these control stations here uh, we'll go over to the other side and do the same well I guess that does mean four doesn't it um, and then what I can do is these blocks are actually underneath the um, what is it the programmable block menu so I will place two down here and hopefully I have the components on me from grinding down those control seats to get these done although it doesn't seem to be the case 
So let's get these two done as well. So what I'll do is add all four of these to my build planner, withdraw the components for these, and then get these things welded up. And at some stage very soon, what I would like to do is get rid of these, um, yeah, kind of get rid of these ugly screens and then change them to something a lot more interesting um, with some of the images that are in the game already. Okay, so what I'll do here is we'll use this one for the first block. Um, the only thing is I don't know which advanced rotor is which. Um, all right, let's try and find our advanced rotor. Um, looks like I have a few actually. Where's the other ones? Um, hmm. All right, let me figure out which rotor is which, and then we can name these properly and get them yeah, added into this menu pretty quick. Okay, well, I've gone and found which hinge is which and which rotor is which. Um, initially, what I did is I did something a bit silly and I put the uh, satellite dish and I turned that on. Um, and then from there, I was able to um, find the two rotors um, by getting them to show in HUD. But then this reaver popped up, so I had to quickly turn it off. And then the way that I found the hinges after that was basically just by moving them um, and then seeing which one moved and then kind of naming them. Um, but anyway, enough about that. So what we've got here is we have our... Um, so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to use this block for the one on the left um, You know because the left is when we're facing that way um, And then I'll use that block over there for the one on the right hand side um, Now there is a good reason why I haven't welded up or built both of them the at the exact same time because you actually need to add all the guns to it so um, but they all kind of pop up in the menu of this block here so if we have a look here so assign azimuth rotor I'm going to use the left control tower gun uh, left control tower gun rotor and then the elevation will be the left control tower gun hinge um, the assigned camera well I haven't even placed a camera on there yet so I can't really do that so what we'll do now though is we will actually add these weapons so what I'll do though is I will I will rename these to like left um, control tower auto cannon one through to six i believe there's six of these things so yeah i'll rename all of these quickly and then we can add them into this block okay cool so these are all renamed so now let's go ahead and actually add these in so our weapons we want to add our tools or our weapons um it's pretty cool how you can actually add in tools as well so add that one add that one that one that one that one and then finally that one and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go upstairs but first I think what I need to do is I need to grab myself some components for a camera now I'm kind of hoping that this large grid one is very similar to the small grid one and we don't need to withdraw additional components but I guess we will find out soon enough won't we and I need to turn off that sensor it's um it's audible alert, audible proximity alert is on. So yeah, and obviously as you can see, I took the liberty of actually completing the rest of the blocks on this thing. So what we'll do is find our camera, um, grab ourselves, no, not that block, that block, thank you. And then we can go ahead and place our camera there like that. Um, and then I can go back inside here and then add that camera to this block. But first what I will do is I will actually rename it. So let's find our camera. Um, I think it's this one, but I don't know if I can... Yeah, it has to be this one because all the other ones are named. So we'll call this left um, control tower, control tower gun camera. Cool. And I'll copy that so that I can use that for the one on the other side as well. Okay, so exit that, go back into this block, and now let's assign a camera. So we have left control tower gun camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable AI and set the radius for this gun at 800 meters. And now it should be controllable. So if I jump into this seat here, 
um, what I can do is in the G menu I can find my custom um, although <laughs> once again I don't know which which freaking block it is um, okay so let's just call this um, I'll just put new for now I haven't I can't really think of a name for that thing so as I was saying I'll change my view here we'll go into the G menu and then we can add our gun so our gun no controller wait wait let's search for custom then okay so two three four new all right so and then we can go where are we we can go to control okay so let's press number one and we should be able to control this thing and there we go we can actually control it and of course I can't fire it because I don't have any ammunition in the system for this thing so let's exit out of that so um, now what ammunition do I actually need to build for this um, let's go to assembler one let's have a look at our consumables um, assault cannon shell um, where is our auto cannon stuff auto cannon magazine I wonder if the large grid and the small grid both take the same magazines um, I think they do because I don't think there is small railgun sabo uh, large railgun artillery shell yeah I, I would imagine that there would be a different type so let's um, let's manufacture like I don't know about 200 of these that should be enough and let's see if those actually end up in the weapon so let's press one and let's try and fire it yeah fantastic that is awesome <laughs> I definitely think feel like that thing has a bit of firepower so hopefully that will work out quite nicely and in fact let me go back into the control panel here and recontrol this turret and see if it can point down yeah, so it can actually point down quite far, although not completely. See, that was the reason why I placed the hinge part the way that I did. Um, and thank you to whoever pointed that out in the comments of my tutorial to build this turret in the first place. Um, it was something that I really didn't consider. So the only issue now is that it can only go... Um, vertical the turret but all you need to do is spin it around to point it at something else so yeah awesome all right cool so now what I'll do is I'll do all the exact same thing but for the other side and I will see you after that all right guys well as you can see I have completed the turret on the other side so yeah I think they look pretty good um, they're not huge so they don't look yeah like absolutely ridiculous and I do think that it fits this space really well even if I was to put like um, one of the newer turrets like maybe um, one of these ones you can kind of see that the edge is kind of poking over the the side of the control tower so I wouldn't really be able to place one I would really like to place some here and maybe one at the front but trying to get all that pipe work working on the inside with conveyor systems and that I just don't think it's gonna work so um all right um, yeah and also now that it's daylight I can get a decent look at this leg that is underneath the control tower and I gotta tell you guys I hate it um, I really do hate it so I think in the next episode I'm gonna get rid of it and I'm basically just going to change it to this kind of a setup. Um, yeah, and then just leave it like that. I think it kind of looks as if this thing is being supported enough. I don't think I really need a leg to be there. It just, I don't know what it is, but it just does not look right. Um, I suspect even if I kind of fill this in or I make the leg go straight down or I make it go like that it's just never really gonna look look right so I'm just gonna get rid of it entirely and then um, yeah so that will be in the next episode also in the next episode I think it's about time that we you know considering that this new weapons update has been released then I think it is time to upgrade our defenses around the base a little bit so um, I was thinking maybe putting some turrets on the corners of these landing pads here 
um, and then like maybe some here as well and then also some here so obviously though we are going to need to run a boatload of conveyors to get that to work so yeah I definitely have a lot of thinking to do but anyway guys that is all that I have time for in this episode of Wasteland Survival and I hope to see you in the next episode if you did like this content then definitely consider leaving a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe so that you do not miss any more content all right guys I will see you next time